and esteem them for the persons of wisdom that they were. Now, not so much in our society. Amen. And so at one time, I, you know, I was, I'm in that generation that, that, that believed uh, and listened to and, and uh, went by the, the, the wisdom that was before me. And they once said something like, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Remember when that was something that was said? You know, and along with many other sayings, right? Well, like, in fact, the one that we talked about uh, just today and, and last week, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Well, that came from the scripture. And then what did our grandmothers and grandparents say? Well, then they said, if you don't nip it in the bud, if you don't get that, that wrong behavior out in the bud, when it first starts to show, if you don't stop it, when it first stops to show, then you're going to create problems later. Just as if you, if you have a flower bed and you see one weed come up and you say, oh, you know, I'm going to leave that to a few weeks later. Well, when you come back, there's not just one weed. Amen. So it came from, it came from the Bible originally and then our grandmothers and grandfathers and, and, and mothers and fathers who we once listened to, who we once esteemed and honored for their wisdom, said the same thing. Right? Well, what about what about a stitch in nine saves time? Right? No, I know many people don't even hear these things anymore. But in essence, if you do the right thing the first time, then you don't have to do it nine more times. Could be one way to think about it, right? A stitch in nine, one stitch in nine saves time. Right? Or, or even um, a penny saved is a penny earned. Again, you do not hear people saying this anymore. These these sage thoughts and comments, you know, which we now, oh, they're just so passe, oh, that's old-fashioned, oh, that's old school. Well, you know, your grandmother or grandfather, who, who were people who functioned in, you know, just common everyday life, they knew more about some science than some people do today. Some some if you ask some children where do where do the apples come from, they will tell you the store. And then what do you have to do? As a responsible parent, right, you would re educate them to understand that no, the apples don't come from the store originally. They come from an apple grove. Right? Well your grandmother mixing those the flour and the baking soda and all the other stuff in the kitchen. She knew more about chemical interactions and science than some people even go on today. Your grandmother and, and, and mother and great grandmother before that, grandfathers, knew that you can't mix oil and water. <laughs> right? They didn't, they didn't wait for Newton or Einstein to tell them that. And in fact, the Bible taught very simple, and you probably heard this before, you don't want to sew together two fabrics that are unlike each other. Because the stronger fabric sewn together could cause to rip away the other fabric who might that might be weaker, a weaker fabric. And I don't say lesser value, right? I'm just talking about the construction of the fabric. That's just one idea. Then also the Bible says don't put new wine into old wine skins. Very scientific. The new wine will cause what? As the scripture says, the skins to burst. Because the new wine has a chemical makeup that things are happening in the sugar and the alcohol that develop and so forth in the air and the gases that would expand the skin or the container, right? And cause the, the wine skin to burst. But I just ignore the fact that this came from the word of God. All as, as the scriptures say in Ecclesiastes, right? There is nothing new under the sun. And another myth, if we can bust it, based on a lot of division, etc., etc., is this idea that you've heard and you've read the scripture, right? Man cannot serve two gods. Man cannot serve mammon, which is money or uh, worldly, you know, things, and God. Either you will hate the one and love the other, 
or love the one and hate the other, right? You've heard that. But have you also heard the scripture? And uh, if you have your Bible available, <laughs> if you've heard the scripture coming from Ecclesiastes, uh, I believe it's 19. I'm sorry, I, I always transpose these numbers. Uh, it's uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. All right, 10 and nine. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. And the scripture reads, and I'm going to read it to you. Um, I'm going to read it to you in the King James Version. And I want you to be able to see how the distinction is made in the Amplified uh, Version of the Bible. And how, and where that, where that difference, are, uh, you know, arrived from, where it came from. So in the King James Version, Ecclesiastes 10, 19 reads, A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. Now, there are some false prophets out there who taught, oh, you see, the scripture says money answers all things. The scripture says money answers all things. So now let's read this in the Amplified text. Now, the traditional amp or the classical Amplified is even different from the regular Amplified. And here's how it reads. In the regular Amplified, the same scripture reads, The officials make a feast for enjoyment instead of repairing what is broken and serve wine to make life merry. And money is the answer to everything. The officials. So in the Amplified, because they have broken down the Greek and the Hebrew, now we see, and remember, that when the King James was written, and it was phenomenal for many years, that's all we had. But then when we got the greater understanding of Greek and Hebrew, we were able to expand our knowledge and understand when the people who wrote the Bible, who were inspired by God, who wrote in Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic, what they were really saying. Because the King James Version is in King James language, right? I mean, how many of you and among you and in your families often said, I can't read the King James. I don't understand the King James. Because it was written, what, using the Elizabethan sort of, you know, English, right? The these and the thous and the these and the begats and, right? But what if we had had access to the interpretation, the correct interpretation, of the true language that the Bible was written in? If we believe and accept that the Bible was written, passed down through the prophets, who were, what? Hello? Israelites and Hebrews. Greeks. Jesus spoke primarily using the Aramaic language. Not Elizabethan English, clearly, right? He had not met King James or King Arthur, <laughs> right? In his day and time when he grew up, he was born into what? A Roman? and Greek, and Israelite, or Hebrew, environment. Do you think that Jesus spoke the these, those, and those, and, you know, all the Elizabethan? We would see that kind of silly, right? In fact, when you look at movies today, if you're really thinking, going back to that critical thinking, and it's obvious, that Jesus would not use some of the language that they use in the in those movies because they're not the language he would have spoken. So if we go back to the originators, right? The Greeks, the Hebrews, the Aramaic, Arameans, people who do language that was used, God spoke to them in their language. They wrote the inspired word of God, believing in the inerrancy of the Bible, right? We can acknowledge that and the assumption, right? If we agree upon that, then we understand that clearly we ought to use the language in which it was first created to get our understanding and our definitions. Amen? 
Amen. So, therefore, when we look at the Amplified, now we have the, um, the, 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 the infusion right, of the Greek and Hebrew, and we see that in the King James Version, a feast is made, then you see that the word officials is not there. Why? Because who was making who was making these determinations, right? Who makes these determinations today? It is not the, the quote unquote common people, right? It's the people with the influence. It's the people who have the money. It's the people who have the education. The people who took the time to study. Right? They're the ones who said, the officials said, make a feast for enjoyment instead of repairing what is broken and serve wine to make life merry to make life merry give wine and money is the answer to everything and that's what we see today so many people see it so easy to just throw money at a situation we know just in logic and life all the money in the world cannot solve certain issues that's why the rich man cannot get into heaven based on his income. And then we look at the classic edition of the Amplified and its uh, use of this same verse, Ecclesiastes 10, 19, and it says, instead of repairing the breaches, the officials make a feast for laughter. And serve wine to cheer life. And depend on taxes, money, to answer for all of it. What a what a amazing clarification of that scripture. Because it's obvious, it's obvious that the false prophet teacher, preacher, guide, whatever, tells you that the King James says money answers all things is not what we read in those two comparative verses in their comparative scripture uh, translation. And clearly we know just logic, experience, wisdom tells you money does not, in fact, answer all things. In fact, some of the division right now today in our politicians has to do with this concept of money answering all things. If it were true that money could answer all things, then why not just print up a whole lot of it and start pouring it around? Because the problem is the same problem with division. In the hands of a demonic source, division creates chaos, destruction, and doubt, and ultimately death. Likewise, in the hands of a demonic source, money creates destruction, division, deception, doubt and eventually death. But in the hands of God, under the power and unction of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Savior, and God the author and communicator of all truth, God the creator and sustainer of all the universe and everything that is in it uses division for creation. And likewise, in the hands of God and the holy inspired person, even that could be you, if you're working under the instruction, rules, and guidelines of the Father, of Jesus the Son, and the unction of the Holy Spirit, money could address a lot of things, but only with the guide of our Father, God the Father, 
God the Son, 